Welcome, everyone. Today, my guest is senior reporter Bill Conroy to talk about MSR deals and the rumor that Wells Fargo may be preparing a record-sized series of MSR offerings. Bill, welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, glad to be here. Always glad to have you on to tell us a little bit about what is happening in the secondary market. And right now we have a pretty juicy story about rumors about uh, Wells Fargo and maybe a mega MSR offering. Can you can you tell us what that story is about? Yeah, it, it, this is one of those stories where um, the rumors, or as they say in, in economics, sometimes perception is reality. And <clears throat> the uh, mortgage servicing rights market is... Um, it, it kind of slowed down a little bit in the fourth quarter of last year, just because you know interest rates uh, and, and inflation, you know, made servicing more expensive, and also met the cost of borrowing for to buy these things was higher. So it it started to slow down a little, but the January kicked off like you know pretty pretty good. I went talking to the people in the business that you had know, like sixty sixty five billion dollars. That's based on portfolio size up for bid <clears throat> uh, public auction. We don't know what was behind the scenes in private deals, um, you know, in January, mid-January, like as of earlier this week. So um, and that's pretty healthy. But what's, what what kind of is, is interrupting the, the, the flow? So there's a lot of capital lined up. It's the beginning of the year. That's when people load their budgets, buyers. And there were a lot of sellers for, for a lot of reasons, including, you know, the, the Troubles in the non-bank sector, actually across the mortgage sector, um, you know, have some folks wanting to sell MSRs as kind of a cash management tool. Also, you know, now is a good time to sell them if you're afraid interest rates are going to drop, right? Uh, because that will affect the value of them. So there's a lot of reasons that people are kind of wanting to get these to market. And then this this uh, rumor sur- services, and it's you know. I, I was told basically it was pretty specific rumor <laughs> that, that Wells Fargo, of course, is getting out of the mortgage or trying to wind down its mortgage servicing portfolio, at least to, to a large degree. But nobody really knows how they're doing that. They came out with a press release recently, you know, reiterating that kind of officially. But it, it had been going on for a little while. But this rumor apparently surfaced late in the fourth quarter and it still persists that they're looking at bringing to market like a total of about $250 billion worth of MSRs, um, up to that much, like 100, 150 uh, billion in, in uh, conventional, like uh, Freddie agency stuff, Freddie Fannie. And then behind that, another 100 billion in Ginnies, which are the, you know, FHA, VA insured mortgages that gets, you know, <clears throat> securitized and through the Ginnie system. Um, and, they ha- and they have, you know, Wells is one of the huge players, has been historically in the mortgage market and they've been winding down, but they still have a really big mortgage servicing portfolio. So this kind of spooks the market, right? Because first of all, is it happening? How big is it? How are they going to do it? Um, and who, who would buy this stuff? You know, for example, what happened after the global financial crisis, right? Like to around 212, 213, a lot of uh, banks were unloading their MSR portfolios, um, and there were companies that kind of sprung up to buy them and manage them. Um, so it's possible we get a new player out of this that that just you know ha- puts the money together and wants to get in the business. But if not, then the the worry is that if they come all at once, it's going to zap all the capital in the market. Um, and actually, there's bunch of school of thoughts on it. That's why it's confusing. It's uncertainty. One school of thought is this would only affect the very top of the market. You know, the, the you know, there's only one or a couple, I shouldn't say one, there's maybe a couple players that, that, that could actually make it a, a deal this big. And so the rest of the smaller deals in the market should be unaffected. Um, but then again, if Wells cars this up into a bunch of smaller uh, offerings over the course of a couple of years, it would take probably, that could hurt you know, hurt liquidity or hit liquidity and pricing over that period of time because it would then compete on uh, with some of these other offerings. But nobody knows yet. Um, and it, it hasn't, as, as far as I can tell, hasn't hit the market yet if they aren't preparing such a big deal. Um, if they did it, you know, as a private deal, I, I assume it would still show up in their SEC filings. In other words, they don't go through a public auction. They just arrange a private bid, de- a private, you know, sale on their own. 
with, with some player that can handle this. So no one knows. That's what's going on as of now. <laughs> and so we wrote the story saying, you know, here's what the, the, the market looks good. Here's the rumor that's that's kind of upending it. And, you know, until it kind of, you know, goes one way or the other. In other words, Wells isn't commenting. At least they didn't comment to us. And in their uh, earnings call, the recent earnings call for the fourth quarter, it, you know, the statement they made is it would take them a long time to wind this down, you know, naturally. But if a, some deal presents itself to them or an opportunity, they'll take it. And so they're not, they wouldn't rule this out in the way it sounds. It, 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 there was a, a an opportunity to, to unload a lot of MSRs right now and wind down their position. They may very well be doing that. Um, so that's where we stand as of today. And, you know, meanwhile, there's 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 still a lot of uh, offers, you know, out on uh, yeah, up for bid. And one one of the theories on this was that because of the rumors, the rumors become, you know, a perception becoming a reality. It might, you know, a lot of buyers are thinking, well, we'll get a better deal. Maybe we should wait before we buy. A lot of sellers are like, let's get in ahead of the market before this does hit in case it does hit. So, you know, a lot more deals could start moving faster uh, in MSR sale deals moving faster into the market. All that affects everything. <laughs> so as we know, supply and demand and pricing are all interrelated. And, you know, I certainly can't figure it out. I know that, you know, it, the people that deal in this day to day that price these and value them and uh, work with the offerings and so forth, it, it has you know kind of upended or created some at least short term uh, uncertainty for them that's making it a little hard to uh, you know to you know operate in the market right now. I guess I mean it's it's not like stalling the market the best I can tell or, or really canceling deals. There's nothing like that that I ran across yet. But it's pretty new, and and it really is going to depend on whether it really materializes, uh, at what level it materializes, and and uh, then how the market shakes out from there. You know, then economics set in once you once it's known, then you can deal with it, right? And that's this unknown stuff. Is these rumors are are, are are that's what we report on. This is a big rumor. It's affecting the market. That's why we're reporting on it. We don't report on rumors normally, but this rumor is big enough that it's actually having uh, an effect on the MSR market right now. And, you know, um, we'll see. That's what I know as of this this moment. I'm trying to follow up on it and keep my eyes on it. I think especially because, you know, you reached out to people, uh, obviously uh, quite a few people, some of whom uh, are on the record and some of whom are, you know, remain anonymous. Uh, but but part of it is, you know, they confirmed that like, yeah, this seems to be out there. Plus Wells itself, as you said, they put out a, a press release that, that seems to indicate that this is coming at some point or this is um, they're, they're winding down that business or looking to, to do something there. So it's not like it's just like out of nowhere. And it's happened before. Um, and it was banks right after the, the, the financial crisis when they had to revamp their portfolios then. So in, and uh, I think it was Bank of America going back. It was 213. They did like a, a huge $250 billion MSR sale. Um, so it, it's not like it's un, totally unprecedented at this level. It's very rare. Um, and of course, back then the markets were all in upheaval. Um, you know, so that's not necessarily the best time right now. Um, you know, really the MSR market was the, the multiples is how they count the pricing and I mean, it peaked in June for a lot of reasons, including the way the interest rate rates work as they rise, they slow prepayment speeds, which means the servicing portfolios gain in value um, and kind of the opposite effect if they start falling because then there's a lot of more refinancing and then, you know, there's shorter term on the, on the, um, on the uh, servicing portfolios. Inflation has its impact too because it increases the cost of servicing, you know, labor and everything else goes up. So that tends to work against, you know, the value of the, um, uh, the Portfolio. So you have these headwinds and tailwinds moving, you know, uh, kind of buffeting this whole market. Um, but it was still at a pretty high multiple rate. I think it peaked at, you know, some people say five and a half, six. And now it's, you know, I did, you know, it's, there's a range, but maybe, maybe it's four and a half, five and up to five and a half. So it's still healthy, but not at the levels it was at. Um, and it, everyone's still 
fairly bullish on it. This is just this rumor. It's hard to even as a reporter to report around this rumor because everything's kind of like what you know. It changes the whole dynamic if if they do push through some big deals, or depending how they push them through, or if they don't. Um, you know, so we'll, I don't know what else to tell anyone except we gotta wait and see. And uh, well, just one one thing that'll be interesting is that hundred billion dollar Gini portfolio, which is you know kind of those are little higher risk loans, FHA, a lot of this FHA stuff, and so um, that might get the regulators involved uh, in looking at that who get who where that is transferred to and how. So I gotta believe at least on the Gini level, probably Fannie and Freddie too, you know, this big a deal, uh, either are aware of it or. At least poking around to see, you know, or would have to be advised to approve it. So there's a lot of variables yet um, on how this works. Um, and uh, the only one who really knows at this point is Wells Fargo. I mean, and, 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 and they're and, not and, talking. No, and you know, and the way these rumors get into the market, at least best I can tell, is um, you know, there's trading desks for all this stuff, and so. If if inquiries are made or or you know trial balloons are sent out or you know the investors are talked to and it doesn't it doesn't take much for for that to to you know spin out into into the market. Now again, I don't put like the the precise offering figures that are thrown out there. The, the you know again you mentioned sources that couldn't be on the record. It was a pretty specific <laughs> rumor. For even for my, you know, usually rumors are a little more vague, but um, so it, it there, there probably is a little credence to it. I would I would say personally, um, um, but again, you know, whether it happens or not, it's still having an impact right now, and that's the story. So people got to keep that in mind, um, and you know. We may see more of this down the road. Um, you know, it, it, anytime a big player gets out of the market or decides to pull, you know, pull back from from the market, you know, it creates waves. It's going to create waves, and so this is not totally unexpected. I, I would think with with, with Wells uh, trying to push, you know, pull out it's such a huge player pulling out of the mortgage market, it's it's going to create some kind of um, you know, aftershock or waves of some sort for the remaining players. Good and bad, good and bad. As you point out, you know, uh, people are trying to figure out sort of like timing the market for this, right? Timing, especially like, you know, do do we get out ahead of it? Is that the best move? Is it is it better to wait, especially, and then you add in the volatile interest rates, right? We've seen- Well, one, uh, of, the, one of the, one, I'm sorry to interrupt, but but I, I'll forget otherwise, but one of the sources in Australia was on the record, he was, was a, you know, a CEO of a mortgage company said, from his point of view right now, you know, these are still earning assets, right? MSRs, you know, make money, you know, and it, it, and his attitude was it, because of the uncertainty right now, if you can hang on and hold out, that's probably a better move that the, you know, that from his point of view, but others, right, are saying that, you know, maybe we need to, if we're, we're intent on selling or need to sell, maybe instead of wait till the second quarter, we better get it up there faster uh, just to get ahead of the, this, this uh, potential big deal. Um, you know, others might just discount it as market talk and, you know, just stay on, stay on track where they're at. Uh, it's hard to say, but there is a lot of volume out there already um, for the start of the year. Um, and, you know, I guess, you know, because the other thing I'm being told is there's a lot of capital more than ever, a significant amount of capital in the market, because, again, these assets are, are you know, are deemed by the market to be fairly good buys. I mean, a very good asset, um, you know, an earning asset. And so you, you're going to have players that are in there that want to get a hold of it. But they're all going to want to get a hold of it as cheap as possible, right? That's the way. You know, I pay more for that card than you need to. Well, and of course, there's, I mean, you do have some originators who have this these MSRs that they need to sell. They they need that money right now. That's the under, that's the underlying thing. And, and <clears throat> that's, you know, helping to increase the supply this year. And the real question is, you know, timing for them, uh, for those that really have the cash flow issues, you know, they're, you know, they're going to have to act regardless, I think, right? And, you know, if they got to sell, they got to sell and, and cross your fingers that you get a better price than, than not. That's about 
where you're at. I think it's interesting that, um, you know, you, you, uh, some of the people you interviewed make the point that like, uh, which you said earlier, if they do it in one big swoop, that's actually almost better as far as like, if you're a smaller player than if they just drag this out over the next two years and just continue to, to sort of flood the market and make it difficult. Yeah. And, and one of the things with the MSR market that I was told, um, by the, by, you know, one of the uh, uh, sources on the record anyway, and, and I don't think it's a secret, is it's not a really liquid market. I mean, relative to the stock market, you know, there's just, there's, there's a limited number of buyers for the asset. And, you know, it, it's, you know, if there's a lot of supply, you know, it, 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 it can get out of whack, you know, in terms of pricing pretty quickly. Um, so, and, or if the capital all gets used up, you know, if, if the budgets are, you know, usually by the end of the year, everyone's bought, you know, everything they budget or that they can handle. And then, you know, you, you know, the, the limit options for selling just dwindle, you know, and a lot of people just step back from the market. Usually at the end of the year, that's what there's, there's few, de few deals in November, December. Um, and then they kick up again in January when everyone's loaded for bear with their new budget. So that's kind of the cycle. But it is important to keep in mind this this market itself is not as liquid as maybe some people are if you know, uh, think of when they think of like you know something like the stock market where you know the you know, the volume in that market buyer or seller side is just you know tremendous. It looks like um, we might know more at the by next week. Is that right? Like timing wise, um, is there is there a time when people can be like, okay, this this seems like um, at least one of your sources said we might know more next week. Well, yeah, he said we might know in a week and then the economics will take over and we'll, you know, whatever, whatever it is, it is and, and the market will adjust to it. The uncertainty makes it really hard right now because pricing and valuation get a little, little more difficult. If you, you know, with this rumor in the background and buyers thinking, well, I want a whole, if they come through it, why am I going to pay a four and a half multiple if I can get it for a four or whatever, right? Um, that's kind of what I understand is happening. Um, yeah, it's got to resolve itself. And I, you know, one of the things is, you know, um, does Wells make an announcement, you know, if, if they're public, so it'd be an SEC filing at some point, um, it, you know, or, you know, the worst case scenario is it just stays like this and, you know, then people just kind of wait, you know, nobody knows until, you know, it happens. That's the problem I'm having reporting on it is, you know, I can't, uh, I can talk to sources and see if they've heard anything or what, how they're reacting. If it, if it doesn't, you know, something doesn't come out, you know, in the next week or two. Um, but, you know, I'm just glad I'm not in that business because I don't know what I would do. put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's, you know, either an advisor or a seller or a buyer right now. And, you know, that's the same question they got to have. How do, how do I, when will I know and how will I know and, and will, will I know? Um, so I think, you know, decisions get made, you know, there's all other variables, you know, like um, Tom Piercy from InCenter said, regardless of this rumor, the reality is that, every deal is unique and there's reasons for selling and for buying. And it's not, this rumor is impacting uh, short term, some of the thinking around that maybe, but people that need to sell are still going to come forward and sell. And people that want to buy are, you know, when there's an opportunity there that works for what they want, they're going to buy. Um, so I don't think the market's going to stall. I didn't get any of that. That it's going to completely, um, you know, freeze up because of this, but it is making it much more difficult to, you know, from what I understand, to figure out values on these deals, um, because there's one set, you know, if it doesn't happen, there's one set, if it does happen, and then the whole question is, how will we know, when will we know? Um, I can't answer that, because <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not on the, uh, the Wells Trading Desk, and I don't think they're going to talk to me. They haven't. Um, and so um, we'll have to see, but we'll stay on top of it, because I, 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 you know, I will try to follow up with a story next week. And, just kind of look at the broader market, carving this little piece out. Uh, so you know, there's more dynamics happening, but hopefully I'll know something soon and I can report it, or, or you know, it gets some other reporter digs it up before I do. Regardless, it, it, it's not going to stay a secret if they do it. Absolutely, and Wells has been in the news for for other reasons, but related reasons, right? So. Um, you know, they had their profit was down 39 percent from 2021. But the fact that they even had a profit in 2022, I think it's a uh, 13.2 billion. 
Um, I mean, that kudos to them, right? It was a difficult year in the second half of the year. And, you know, then they, they made the decision to exit uh, the correspondent space, which was, uh, you know, accounted for about 44% of their total mortgage origination volume um, in the fourth quarter of 2022. But but you can understand why, given, you know, what what's going on in the market, that they would do that. So, you know, that plays into this as well. Yeah. And, and you know, they're, they're, from what I understand, they'll still make a portfolio of their own loans. They just don't want to be handling servicing or, or, you know, dealing with other people's loans. Right. You know, so the correspondent channel is a little weird. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, they're basically their loans. I don't know how they separate that, but um, yeah, I, I wish I could, I wish I had more definitive answer for, you know, um, what's going to happen. Um, but I don't, and I'm not going to make believe I do. Um, I just got to keep reporting the story and see what happens. Um you know, that's life. I mean, this is real life. So, you know, you don't, you don't, you can't predict tomorrow. You kind of, kind of got to deal with what's in front of you today. And I think that's the way the market will ultimately operate. You know, every day is a new day in the market and people make decisions for a hundred different reasons. Well, and listen, we have uh, listeners to this podcast who, who might serve as um, more sources for you. So how can they contact you? Um, email is the best. I, I check email frequently. It's just W Conroy, C O N R O Y. Uh, the first initial is W, as in William, which is not the name I use. It's the name my mom uses. Um, <laughs> and then at housingwire.com. So W Conroy at housingwire.com, best way to get in touch with you. If anybody on this, uh, listening to this podcast has some information that they want to uh, share with you on this or other, you know, secondary market issues. Yeah, no, I'm definitely always interested in uh, insights, comments, and, you know, um, you know, corrections, amplifications. I mean, I take all of it seriously. So, you know, send it along. Um, and, you know, I'll keep my ears to the ground and my eyes in the tall buildings on this one and see what happens. Well, Bill, thanks so much. We'll be uh, looking forward to, as we see this story com- continue to unfold and, and what happens in the coming weeks and or months. And we'll have you back on. But thanks so much for being on today. All right, sir. Thank you. And you know, have, a, have a good week wherever, wherever we're at in the week next week, this week. Okay.